Hello and welcome to Lunchtime Live, the regular Friday lunchtime series, which normally happens in St Francis Church opposite the iconic tobacco factory in Bristol. Um, now, I'm Nicola Woodward um, and I'm going to be broadcasting to you from my front room today. Um, so thank you very much for tuning in. Um, before I get started, the organisers have asked me to make a couple of requests. And the first is that, if you wouldn't mind, please could you subscribe to the channel? It won't cost you anything, but it raises our profile. And secondly, um, sorry to say this, but the series does still have costs. So um, we do welcome donations with the banner at the top of the page or via online, which is www.lunchtimelive. Um, so thank you very much for that. Um, so thanks for tuning in. It, very strange to know that I have lots of friends out there listening. So, uh, in Malta, in Turkey, uh, London, Bristol, and lots of people in France. So, un grand bonjour à tous les Français qui m'écoutent, um, and thank you. I'd like to start with uh, one of the the all-time greatest works, probably for solo flute, the Partita in A minor by J. S. Bach. Now, we're not quite sure when this was written, but probably towards the end of his life, certainly in the latter half of his life. And it's essentially a suite of dance movements, four dance movements. Um, the first is an allemande, which is a German dance, quite stately. The second, courant, which is French and a little bit more racy. Uh, the Spanish saraband is a very poignant third movement. And then it ends with uh, a bourrée anglaise. And that's a reminder that we will be dancing again at some point. So this is the suite in A minor by J.S. Bach. <coughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
in A minor by J.S. Bach. Sorry, I'm just going to turn the heater off. <clears throat> so, an iconic work for the flute. Um, now to um, Charles Kirchland, and a especially warm welcome to the Ami de Charles Kirchland that are listening in from France, and I think some of his family members um, might even be listening, so that's a real honour. Merci d'être là. Um, so Charles Kirchner, not many people have heard of him, but he's an amazing composer, unduly neglected, and I really don't understand this, and it's one of, one of the things I would like to put right, if there's nothing else I do. Um, so he was born in 1864 and died in 1950. He was prolific, um, wrote for all genres. Um, I think it's fair to say he was probably a little quirky and eccentric um, and slightly obsessive, but very human and clearly a genius. And as you can tell, he's kind of my hero. Um, I did find a picture of him. So he looks like that. You can see that. Everything is in reverse here, so it's a bit tricky to know where to put it. So that's Charles Kirchlin. Um He wrote, as I said, for all genres, but particularly did like the flute. And there's lots of wonderful chamber music for the flute, but I think by far his greatest legacy for flautists are the 96 uh, pieces for unaccompanied flute called Chants de Nectaire, Songs of Nectaire. Now, Kirschlan was very much inspired by nature and mythology, astrology and literature, and all that comes over in his music. Um, but the Chants de Nectaire were directly inspired by a book um, by Anatole France called La Révolte des Anges. And I'm told it's the subject of a lot of dictations, or la dictée, which the French um, like. So, la, Révo uh, la Révolte des Anges, written in 1914 by Anatole France. And the main character in that book is Nectaire, who is a philosopher and flute player. And the pieces, the 96 pieces, come in three books of 32 each. Um, today, I'd like to play seven pieces from the middle book, entitled uh, Dans la forêt antique, in the antique forest. But before I do that, I'd like to just read a little bit and translate from Anatole France's book, just to take you a little bit into that world. So, je vous prie de nous jouer de la flûte. I beg you to play the flute for us. Le vieillard y consentit. Il approcha de ses lèvres le tuyau de bois si grossier qu'il semblait avoir été façonné par le jardinier lui-même. The old man obliged and put the flute to his lips. It was a rough wooden pipe that seemed as if the gardener could have made it himself. Il préluda quelques phrases étranges, puis il développa de riches mélodies sur lesquelles les trilles brillaient ainsi que sur le velours, les diamants et les perles. He began with several strange phrases and then developed rich melodies over which trills shone like diamonds and pearls on velvet. I love that bit. Uh, Manié par des doigts ingénieux et animé d'un souffle créateur, le tri rustique résonnait comme une flûte d'argent. Wielded by dexterous fingers, 
and filled with the breath of creation, the wooden rustic pipes resonated like a silver flute. On croyait entendre à la fois le rossignol, les muses, tu la nature et tu l'homme. He believed that you could hear all at once the nightingales, the muses, all of nature and all of mankind. Okay. Seven pieces from the Chant de Nectaire by Charles Kirchner. So the first is À l'ombre par une fraîche matinée de printemps, in the shade on a fresh spring morning. The light. The rustling of leaves.
<coughs> now the next piece is the only one of 96 pieces by Charles Kirchner that uh, says this option to play it on the piccolo. So I thought I'd do just that for you. Um, some of you heard me play a little while ago with a metal head joint on the piccolo, um, but I finally settled and I bought this one, a wooden one, um, probably only six weeks ago. So I'm still getting used to the intonation, um, but I'd like to play Le Chevrier on the piccolo, the goat herd. <laughs> Now, Jeu de Naïdes. Naïdes was a water nymph, so here she is at play. And then the last two, the Chants de Nectaire, I'd like to play, um, they're both drunks actually. Selene was the accomplice and possibly the teacher of Dionysus, who was the goddess of drunkenness and winemaking, I think the equivalent of, of Bacchus. So Selene followed by the cortege de Dionysus. <coughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
crazy music. <laughs> so those were the Chant de Nectar by Charles Cochelin. <clears throat> now, something completely different. Um, I'd like to take us to Scotland. Um, 1975, the next piece was written by George McElwam for a BBC documentary about the island of Sula. And the piece is called The Isle of Sula. I'd like to play it on the alto flute, um, which for those of you who aren't familiar with the alto flute, it looks like, yeah, okay, so it's a little bit bigger than the conventional flute, and the bore, you can see, is quite a lot, woo, a lot wider, um, so it's got a very deep resonant sound, even though it's only actually a fourth lower than the conventional flute. So, the alto flute, um, and all through the music, McElwell has written what's going on in the in the scene. So you get rippling waves, the moon on the sea, um, a boy dancing, seal swimming, gulls whirring. Um, and McElwell, I'm sure you've worked out by now, was very keen on Scottish music and um, he loved Scotland. And that comes over in all his music and there's quite a folky element in that. So this is the Isle of Sula by George McElwell. Thank you. That was The Isle of Sula by George McElwam, who was actually principal fleet of the BBC Scottish for a long time. Now, I don't know about you, but I've really enjoyed the birds these last few weeks. I don't know whether they're more active as we are less active or whether they've just been enjoying the sunshine. Um, but they've been absolutely wonderful in our garden. 
And also, as flute players, we very often tend to get the part of the bird in any orchestral music. So I thought we'd play a little game. I'm going to play some very famous bird excerpts for you. And if you can name them all, and they're composers, and you'd like to let me know, um, I'll send a free CD or a tickets for a, the next live concert, if we ever get one. <laughs> So my website is www.nicolawoodward.uk. If you go to that website and the contacts page, you can let me know your answers. So I'm looking for the names of five birds and their composers. One of them is the odd bird out. So if you can also tell me which is the odd bird out and why, that would be good. And I should be looking for the best answers. So here we go. I'll just get my fingers back around this slightly smaller flute before I set off. Okay, bird number one. is you might want to dance to this one. coming up. snippets from this piece um, so uh, give you as many clues as possible. slightly wrongly so I'm going to have to use the music for this bird and keep your fingers crossed because this bird is not easy. So this is bird number five and I'm looking for the composer and the name of the piece of music and if you know them all you can send them to nicolawoodward.co.uk. So bird number five. Bird number 
bird music for you. Um, thought that rather went with the wallpaper too. Okay, so we're nearing the end of this recital. It's really lovely that you've all tuned in. Thank you so much for coming along. I'm going to finish with something a little bit folky. Um, it starts with a, a beautiful English folk tune uh, called the Sheep Shearing Song. But actually don't look up the words because the tune is haunting and lovely and the words uh, don't really seem to fit the tune. Anyway, I was inspired to come up with this sort of compilation, let's say, um, after playing the Somerset uh, Rhapsody by Gustav Holst um, when I was in youth orchestra here in Bristol. And the story really stuck with me. Um, so I used the same tune that Holst used, the, the sheep shearing song, and put some other bits and pieces with it. And it tells a very poignant story for me, um, but I'm not going to let you, I'm not going to tell you what, what it means to me. I'd like you to maybe come up with your own story. Um, at the end, I'm experimenting a bit with singing and playing at the same time. I'm not sure how the computer microphone is going to deal with that, but that, I can assure you, is meant to be there. So um, this is uh, what I call the Sunset Lament.
because the summer set meant. Well, thank you very much for listening. That's the end of this recital. Um, please come back again next Friday at 10 past one. And uh, if you'd like to donate anything, you can still go to the website, which is www.lunchtimelive. So a few thank yous from me to Robert and Amelia for making this happen. Um, to my lovely friends who've listened to me and helped me deal with playing to a screen. I'm very grateful to you. Um, also to my family for putting up with quite a lot of flute practice when they haven't been able to leave the house and run away from it. So you're great guys, I can hear you in the kitchen. Um, so thank you very much for being here. Best wishes and lots of love to all my friends out there and new friends who I hope will come and hear a live performance sometime. Um, I'd like to play you out by returning to Charles Kirschner and playing a, a prayer. Um, it's actually entitled Prière de l'épouse dans le mari est parti à la guerre, Prayer of the Wife Whose Husband Has Left for War. And I thought it was rather appropriate, um, so I'd like to dedicate this to not only my numerous friends who work for the NHS, but everyone who's getting on with it and you know, risking things daily on our behalf. So this is a prayer for everyone in the NHS. Thank you very much. Thank you.